Welcome and thank you for participating in today's meeting for the South Coast Air Quality Management District. All participants on Zoom, except for board members and South Coast AQMD staff, will be placed on mute. You will not be able to mute or unmute your line manually. After each agenda item, public comment will be taken. If you are participating on Zoom and wish to comment, please click on the raise hand button. If you are participating by phone and wish to comment, please dial star nine. When it is your turn to speak, your name will be called. For phone participants, your name or part of your phone number will be called when it is your turn and the host will unmute your line. Speakers may be limited to a total of three minutes or less for all items on the agenda. Following the meeting agenda items, a general public comment period is allowed to provide the public an opportunity to speak on any items not on the agenda. During the general public comment period, speakers may be limited to three minutes or less. The amount of time to comment may be shortened to ensure all speakers can be heard. A countdown timer will be displayed on the screen for each public comment. For questions or issues related to making public comment, please call the Public Advisor at 909-396-3247. That's 909-396-3247. In terms of decorum, please adhere to the speaker time limit and treat others with courtesy, civility, and respect. Failure to do so can result in your mic being muted or you being removed from the meeting. Lastly, please be aware that this meeting is being recorded. By participating, you agree to authorize recording of audio and visual content presented during the live event and consent to subsequent use of the recording in the public domain by South Coast AQMD. Thank you for that. All right, let's call the Environmental Justice, Justice Advisory Group meeting to order. Uh, can we get a roll call, please? Yes, and I just like to um, Angie still in the attendees side, um, but she needs to accept to be promoted. So I keep trying to promote her. So if she can hear me, um, there you go. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and start the roll call. Um, Senator Delgado here. Supervisor Rutherford. Board member Veronica Padilla Campos here. Mayor Elizabeth Alcantar. Here. Uh, Reda Alexander. Manuel Arredando. Is Manuel here? He hasn't joined us. Angie Balderas. Here. Thank you. Dr. Beeson. Here. Susan Bilido. Present. Paul Cho. Carrie Doy. No, Carrie. Dr. Afif El Hassan. Here. Thank you. Mary Figueroa. Here. Angela Garcia. Present. Kareem Congora. Present. Thank you. Anna Gonzalez. Anna. Dr. Monique Hernandez. No, Dr. Hernandez. Dr. Jill Johnson. Present. Thank you. Humberto Lugo. David McNeil. Don't see David. Donald Smith. No, oh, Donald Smith. Rafael Yanes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm present. Thank you. And I think that Anna Gonzalez. Present. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a total of 13, so we do have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Okay, do you have any opening remarks or anything that you need to, um, nothing, Derek? Okay. Actually, yes, one, I forgot. Uh, well, you're gonna do the minutes first, right? I, I was gonna do that next. Yeah, so yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, all right. So we have uh, the approval of the October 28th minutes. Does anybody have any questions or a motion? To, uh, this is Kareem, I'll move to approve. Okay. I'll second. Second. Thank you. We got Angela on that one and, and Larry as well. Yeah. We don't need to take public comment before we, we do? No, okay. All right, can we get a roll call on the approval of the minutes, please? Yes, okay. Um, Senator Delgado. Yes. Thank you. Board member Veronica Padilla Campos. Yes. Thank you. Um, Mayor Elizabeth Alcantar. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have, and Angie Valderas. Yes. Thank you. Dr. Beeson. Um, we didn't hear that, Dr. Yeah, Beeson. I, I, I'm trying to talk over my dog barking. Um, <laughs> approve. Thank you. Uh, Susan Billado. Yes. Thank you. And uh, sorry, uh, Dr. El Hassan. Yes. Thank you. Mary Figueroa. Yes. Yeah. Angela Garcia. Yes. Kareem Congora. Yes. Yeah. Anna Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you. Dr. Jill Johnston. Yes. Thank you. And Rafael Yanes. Yes. I think uh, David McNeil is on. He's on the attendees under David only. Is that David McNeil? Uh, let's see, can we promote him over so he can talk? Hey, David, you have to accept. There we go. Okay. David, did you want to vote on that? I, I approve, yes. Thank you. Did you hear me? Yes, thank you. So we have a vote yes. of 14. So it passes, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so we have review of follow-up action items. Mr. Derek Alatore. Thank you. No action items to, uh, to follow up on, but I do wanna just uh, say that uh, Monica Kim, who is a senior staff specialist here at the district is is now taking over uh, EJ and she's been promoted to public affairs manager. So congratulations to Monica. And she's giving the next presentation. Thank you, Derek. Um, great. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Monica Kim. As Derek said, I'm the new public affairs manager for EJ. Um, so I've been with South Coast Community for about seven years now, um, and in the last few years, I've been overseeing WAM, um, and in the last year, EJ. Uh, so I'm really excited to be in this new role and to be working with all of you. Um, and I wanted to go over some of the key accomplishments for 2022. So as you all know, um, the goals of EJAG are to advise South Coast AQMD on issues related to environmental justice. Uh, to create and sustain a positive and productive relationship between South Coast AQMD and community members, uh, to better inform South Coast AQMD about EJ issues, and to contribute to meaningful progress uh, toward the achievement of environmental justice. So in 2022, um, EJAG met quarterly for updates uh, and to discuss EJ and air, -related, uh, air quality issues with one special meeting scheduled in February. And in 2022, the committee nominated one new member to the Environmental Justice Advisory Group, Anna Gonzalez. Um, the committee also saw presentations on a variety of topics, including one on Rule 2305, uh, the Warehouse Indirect Source Rule, 
and the development of proposed rule 2306, uh, the indirect source rule for new intermodal facilities, um, as well as the draft 2022 AQMP um, and one on uh, rule 403.2, fugitive dust emissions. Uh, we also had updates from South Coast AQMD staff on air monitoring and um, the find uh, feature on our website. That's the facility information detail feature. And we also had uh, Mayor Alcantar provide an update on uh, odor issues at rendering facilities, which led to uh, the EJAG members voting on signing and submitting a letter to the governing board regarding this matter. Thank you. Congratulations on your new role, Monica. We look forward to working with you. Any questions or comments on the report for 2022? Okay, don't see any hands. Um, let's move on to uh, the summary of state and federal legislation. Senator, uh, Senator oh. uh, public comment, but I don't see any hands raised, so I think we're, we're safe, but we're gonna do a public comment after each item. Uh, Al has his hand up. Yep. Go ahead. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. Thank you and welcome, Monica. Um, so one of the things that I just want to emphasize, you know, there's uh, still a lot of work to be done, and um, I'm I'm hopeful that uh, we can get to the continued pushing of the uh, some of the odor issues that still plague the community. Um, you know, there's still a lot of effort. And we still have uh, AB 617 um, that we're trying to uh, bring uh, to the table, as well as uh, a lot of other uh, environmental justice issues that um, have been left unfinished from 2022. So I look forward to the new year under your leadership and uh, looking forward to getting, getting our, rolling up our sleeves and getting our hands a little dirty. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. If I could just uh, say something, uh, Chair, appreciate that. Um, Rafael, yeah, there's a lot of uh, different sources of odors and uh, we're, we're doing our best, but it also takes the help of, of the permitted facilities to also do the same, to do their job. We're doing the job as, as best as we can. We can always do better and they can always do better. Uh, but as, as you're well aware, there's a number of sources out there, including where you work at, at sanitation, especially Hyperion. So um, we're doing our best, and but we need everybody else to do their job too. So appreciate that. Much agreed, much agreed. Okay. Um, so there's nothing on the public comment side that I see. So we'll move on to item number five. Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Philip Crabb, and I'm the Senior Public Affairs Manager working on state and federal legislation uh, for the South Coast AQMD. Um, so just I will be providing a brief end of year update for 2022 on state and federal legislative items. Um, and if we could maybe move to the next slide. And one more, please. Great, thank you. Um, so first, uh, there's a few state bills I wanted to mention. First, we have AB 2836 by Eduardo Garcia, and that's a bill that reauthorizes the Carl Moyer and AB 923 programs to provide incentive funding uh, for cleaner vehicles and equipment to air districts throughout the state until January 1st, 2034. Uh, so that was the key. It was set to expire in 2024, so we were able to extend it out to uh, 2034. This bill was sponsored and supported by South Coast AQMD and signed into law by the governor. Um, next, we have AB 1749 by Assemblymember Christina Garcia, which is a bill that allows for the extension of time from one to two years to develop a SERP for the AB 617 community. This time extension is allowed with CARB and uh, Community Steering Committee approval. Uh, this was a key support bill for South Coast AQMD and it was also signed into law by the governor. Um, we also uh, had uh, AB 2141, also authored by Eduardo Garcia, which is a bill that was focused on obtaining an ongoing annual allocation of state funding for AB 617 implementation costs and AB 617 related incentive funding. 
This bill sought up to 20% of annual proceeds from the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund, but no more than a $600 billion in total per year. So it was really seeking to get a sustainable funding source for that program, which is sorely needed. Um, this bill was sponsored and supported by South Coast AQMD. However, ultimately the bill died and did not move forward in the state legislative process. Um, but in the meantime, we were, you know, for the same purpose, we were working uh, on this advocating with regard to the state budget. And so the AB 617 program did receive funding through the budget um, allocations as follows um, for the current, actually, I'm sorry, next slide, please. For the current 22-23 fiscal year, $300 million in AB 617 incentive and implementation funding statewide was allocated. Um, there was also a commitment made uh, for $300 million from the state general fund uh, for AB 617 funding for the upcoming fiscal year 23-24. And based on prior conversations that we had in Sacramento, there is a potential for there to be an ongoing annual funding allocation of $300 million for AB 617 going forward. We plan to continue to advocate for additional funding beyond that $300 million. Now, a very recent update, however, the recent governor's proposed state budget for fiscal year 23-24, so every January, the governor will put forth his first draft of the state budget. And there's obviously um, about $22.5 billion in, in deficits that are being dealt with. Um, so there's lots of cuts going around. And that proposed budget proposed to cut AB 617 funding uh, to $250 million. Um, so we will be going through the budget process, working with the legislature and the governor's office to see if we can try to up that number um, and do the best we can to make sure that the program is funded. Um, I'll move on to the next slide, please. Moving on to federal legislation. So uh, one of the biggest uh, bills that has happened this past year and also uh, in decades really is the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 or the IRA. And this was a major piece of legislation that created a large number of funding opportunities uh, that benefit the environment, but you may have seen how it in, uh, actually benefited many different facets of life, even not related to the environment. But there was a lot of funding that was uh, made available um, that's relevant to the South Coast and air quality efforts. Um, so some of the examples of IRA funding opportunities include a variety of tax credits that includes energy efficiency, home credits, clean vehicle credits and also used clean vehicle credits. Um, also, there was additional federal funding options that uh, include uh, $1 billion for clean class six and seven vehicles. So we're talking about you know larger vehicles. Class eight is more like a, a semi truck. So trucks that are and vehicles that are a little bit smaller than that. Um, but you had $1 billion with 400 million of that allocated for non-attainment areas within the country like South Coast, uh, the South Coast region. So really making sure that there's funding available for the places that need it the most. Also, there was $3 billion to reduce air pollution at ports. And that also included $750 million of that funding set aside for again, federal air quality non-attainment areas like the South Coast region. Um, another one was the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund. This provides funding to the US EPA to help leverage private investments in projects that combat climate change. Over 40% of these investments will go to low income and disadvantaged communities and eligible recipients do include nonprofit organizations. Um, I'll mention a couple more. Um, one was funding to address air pollution at schools and another one is consumer home energy rebates. Also, I'll just mention you know, with respect to the Salton Sea, which is also within our, our district, um, the IRA also included $4 billion for the Bureau of Reclamation for items related to drought issues affecting the Colorado River. And that's a way that, you know, actually we get lots of our, our water from that river. Um, and that's been affecting the Salton Sea. And efforts were made to ensure that the Salton Sea received funding for mitigation and restoration. And I'm sorry, I'll, I'm happy to answer a question. Thanks. For, sorry to interrupt, but I saw a B next to these numbers. I was like, well, that's a lot of money. And then I realized it's federal. So I'm like, okay, now it kind of makes sense. But because <laughs> it's nationwide, right? These this this funding isn't um allocated specifically to districts, to states, or anything like that. It's just kind of like available for everybody. 
Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it definitely varies and there's many programs and there was guidelines that are still being established. Some of it's by EPA, some of it is by the treasury or the internal revenue service. It covers lots of different uh, agencies. Some of the money for some of these programs is formula funding. So like for California would get a specific percentage of funding automatically kind of based on different formulas. Um, but then there's another level for some of these programs, which is co competitive. So there'll be grants that need to be applied for. And it, it's gonna vary sometimes it's available for local governments or nonprofits. So this was such a large bill and it affected so many facets of life really. Um, but that's kind of the answer to the question. Some of these programs are all formula and some maybe all competitive and some are a mix of both. Um, so oh, that's yeah. why I think some of those like $400 million for the uh, six to seven, uh, class six and seven vehicles that's going to be some of its formula, some of it's dependent on, on competitive uh, grant allocations. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, David? If they can be me. Yes, this is um, great information. Um, in my regular role, I'm with the Baldwin Hills and Urban Watersheds Conservancy. We just expanded our territory down to Hawthorne, out to uh, El Segundo LAX and up to the 10 freeway and east of the 110. And I, and I look at the schools and I look at the airports and I look at all these facilities and we're looking to spend investment on greening um, and climate resiliency and climate you know, adaptation. I'm just wondering who and how I could leverage some of our state funding with some of the federal funding that might be coming through uh, AQMD uh, to actually, you know, they're all kind of overlapping project projects in terms of uh, tree canopy and, uh, and 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 some of the restoration work. Uh, so I'm just curious if there a contact or is there some 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 group that's kind of thinking things cohesively that we can work with. Uh, I would refer to uh, my boss Derek Alatori, uh, the bigger picture. But um, I think if there's some specific types of issues that you're concerned on that maybe you could, you know, forward some more specific information and we can see, you know, what opportunities might be out there. I think this is the thing is some of these programs are still being developed and stakeholder input is being uh, sought to establish guidelines and things like that. So there's a lot to navigate. So, you know, we're, do, we're doing the same thing, but happy to try to provide information. Uh, and maybe if you could provide something in writing that we can uh, look into more, more specifically. Yeah, I don't want. So I, I, would, I don't have anything to add to that, David. But I, I, I definitely agree with Philip on that. And you know, partnerships are always important. Um, but spreading the word out, I know, and maybe this doesn't really address your question, but in the past, people have asked us to let them know, organizations know when there's opportunities to partner uh, with grants and, and, and things. Um, so uh, I think that's really important to do. Yeah, I, I'll I'll reach out to you and 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 try and figure out where we could leverage, at least in the territory. And if we do it in the early stages, it's a lot easier than doing it later on. So that would be my goal. Thank you. And Mr. Yanez. Hi, thank you. <clears throat> Great presentation. And uh, so, you know, as a member of the community, you know, I want to make sure that I understand. So if there's any portions or any funding sources that are, that are the, you know, those that are first to the trough, so to speak, um, you know, if I could, if I could uh, personally lend a hand in any type of way in order to help facilitate, you know, securing some of the funding, especially in the uh, EJ communities um, around, the South Coast Basin itself, you know, things like, you know, transportation uh, funding and, uh, you know, air quality monitoring and all that other stuff, you know, especially, you know, if I, I just want to volunteer my expertise or hell, even if it's just, you know, filling out an application or something like that, you know, I just want to personally uh, extend my, um, my services if, if you guys need it. Great. Thank you for that. 
And um, I'll just wrap up. Uh, so speaking of the Salton Sea, out of that $4 billion that went to the Bureau of Reclamation, and um, as a result of the efforts made uh, to ensure that Salton Sea received funding for mitigation and restoration, $250 million was set aside to benefit the Salton Sea. Um, I just wanna mention a couple of regulatory items too from US EPA. Um, the NOx emission standard for heavy duty trucks that's been going on for quite a while now. Um, it was adopted by US EPA in December, 2022. So that is a new rule that hopefully will help reduce emissions. Um, and South Coast is also monitoring the progress of a petition to address locomotive emissions. Um, should I take the question or finish up? I'm happy to do either one. I think that's uh, Rafael's hand from before. Oh, okay. Um, Fantastic. So yeah. Um, okay. So um, also federal agencies, as I kind of mentioned before, are currently seeking stakeholder yeah. input as they develop the programs included within the IRA and also the bill, the huge bill that was passed last year or previous year, 2021, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law or the bill, BIL. Um, so South Coast also engaged in the annual federal appropriations process. Um, so par as part of that, South Coast was included in the omnibus appropriations bill for $500,000 for a hydrogen fuel cell line hull project, a uh, locomotive project. Um, so that was helpful. It's not the full amount needed for the project, but it definitely is a, step, a big step in the right direction. And also a uh, part of South Coast AKD efforts um, we helped achieve for fiscal year 2023, uh, there was $100 million for DERA grants, uh, $69.9 million for targeted airshed grants, and $249 million for section 103 and 105 funding. And as was mentioned earlier, these are nationwide. So it definitely, we will only get a, a portion of this and it just kind of depends on the process. But um, the bigger that number, you know, the more opportunity for us to get funding for the South Coast region. So that's my update on state and federal. Uh, thank you. And I'm happy to answer any additional questions. Thank you for that. Um, I'll give everybody a minute to ask some questions. And we've got something from board member Padilla. And uh, if anybody from the public would like to ask a question, please just raise your hand. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. I was wondering, um, I also know that EPA put out something to um, prohibit lead in aviation fuel. Is AKMD following that, taking a stance on that or anything? I'll defer to yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I'd have to check, but I know that we briefed yesterday uh, specifically white, uh, on Whiteman, Whiteman Airport, is it? Yesterday, we I think we briefed uh, Monica Rodriguez's office on that. And uh, I know that those, those are issues that we're concerned about, but I can defer over to Nick. Nick, if you have some information on that. Yes, uh, Board Member Padilla Campos. Typically, under the Clean Air Act, we're, it's very limited on what we can do, number one, with mobile sources and number two with fuel. So where our jurisdiction typically focuses on is the actual equipment um, and, you know, the emissions from the equipment, not necessarily of, you know, the, the federal and state governments are make the, make the standards for the fuels and, you know, other safety operations related to that. But I mean, definitely, you know, it's something like Derek indicated we can look at, but it's something where, you know, we've tested those waters um, but also where, you know, there's, there's specific agencies and regulatory bodies who deal with, you know, the, the fuels and other things that go into the equipment. But, um, you know, it's something if, if there's a, a lane for us to explore, you know, we can look into that. So we will be offering extra support for that? Because I know it's moving forward. I was just wondering if, if AKMD was ta taking a supportive stance on. Yeah, I think that's something we have to take to the board. Okay. But I'll, I'll make sure I bring it up to a, to Wayne's attention, um, okay. and, and see where we're where we're at on that. Uh, okay, that's all I, can I think that would be important for this board to to receive updates on. Thank you. Looks like we have one more, Angela. Hi, thank you. Um, 
yes, I, I heard you mention that uh, you, um, maybe I wasn't sure, but $250 million was set aside for the salt and sea. Uh, what bill was that? So I can look more into it. That was, uh, I believe that was part of IRA, but that was uh, a, a part of a larger allocation going uh, regarding the Colorado River to the Bureau of Reclamation. So that was that was part of IRA, that large funding. Yeah, so Angela just, so IRA is the uh, Inflation Reduction Act by the federal government, and it sent oh. monies down to local agencies. So that so that would be somewhere in the HR five three seventy six, Inflation Reduction Act. Yes. Okay. And I don't see any other hands. Um, so uh, thank you so much for that presentation. I'm super hopeful that um, all that money will trickle down at some point soon, and it'll help reduce uh, air uh, emissions. Okay, I think we have Monica back for an update on CAPES and WAM. Hello again. Um, so I'll be giving a brief verbal update on our air quality education programs. Um, so for some background, uh, CAPES or the Clean Air Program for Elementary Students is our elementary school uh, education program. And WAM or the Why Healthy Air Matters program is our middle school and high school education program. Um, so both programs aim to increase awareness of air quality issues among our youth and to uh, empower them to drive positive change. Um, for both programs, we hosted a Clean Air Day event in October of last year, and we had over 1,500 participants. And for CAPES, uh, we have implemented at a total of 36 schools so far uh, this school year. Um, we're also currently working on adding additional materials to CAPES for year three of the program, um, and that includes two new worksheets and two uh, new videos, and so those should be available on our website sometime uh, later this year, and um, we're also working on getting all of our materials translated into Spanish. Um, for WAM, we have implemented at a total of 136 classrooms so far um, this school year. Um, and we've hosted approximately five virtual events this school year with over a thousand students in attendance. Um, and I believe we have five uh, more planned for the rest of the school year. Um, we've also been participating in other events, um, in-person events such as the Claremont High School uh, Career Day. And we will also be hosting a virtual Earth Day event in April for both CAPES and WAM. Um, and of course, all educators are uh, welcome to participate. And so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Committee members, any questions about CAPES and WAM? We have board member, but yeah. Sorry, um, Monica, that sounds really awesome. But is there a calendar somewhere that we where we can follow these events? Um, I don't know if I've ever seen or received one. Uh, I can provide one. I can make that sure. Be that, great. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, I don't see any hands raised from the public. Just one question on that, Monica. So I know that we are trying to see how there are um, ways to expand the program. Um, are we going to continue this year with the program as is while those things are resolved to see if there's a bill out there? So if I, I'll, I'll answer that, Monica. So the contract uh, that we have for WAM expires uh, the end of September of this year. So um, depending on uh, what the board wants to do, uh, we will have to issue an RFP pretty soon. If we are going to continue it, and I think that's something for an internal discussion. Uh, but as you mentioned, we're looking at, at other, uh, other ways to, to fund the program. And uh, one of them, you know, we're, we're trying to do a, uh, a, a budget allocation for uh, a similar type of program that will include parts of the CAPES and WAMS program in their, in, in their uh, curriculum or their after-school program. Uh, that's moving forward and, you know, I, I keep the ledge committee updated on, on those, uh, on, uh, on the, specifically on that and other bills that we're seeking to 
sponsor. And you'll get one again next, or in two weeks, you'll get a, an update on that. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I don't see anybody else with questions. Thank you, Monica. Um, so we've got other business. Anybody on the committee want to bring anything up? Um, any questions, any updates that you'd like to see from staff? Now's the time to bring those up. Anybody have any um, additional matters they want to go over? Uh, I think it'd be great to give everybody an update on where we are with the rendering facilities for the next meeting. I know there's been some some updates on that. Okay, we can. Uh, so I think Nick is probably going to ask us to give a very general mm -hmm. overview on it uh, because of what's going on. But I'll let Nick um, talk about that if he would like. Yeah, you, you asked for the next meeting, uh, Vice Chair? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically we're in litigation for a matter that started at the hearing board and and is still in um, litigation with the Superior Court. So as far as public actions for that one, and then, you know, we'll I'll, I'll work with Derek and, and seeing how we can give other information on the other sites. I think, like, as everybody know, and I'm interested as well, what's the status with Farmer John? Because when we hear some things closing and they're still open. It's always interesting. Like, what does that actually mean when someone's closing? So we'll see what we can find out um, to kind of, you know, provide an update on on the individual sites as well as, well as uh, globally. But um, Derek and I will work on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Perfect. We've got Rafael with a question. Yeah, so if we can have an update on many of the um, maybe um, things that uh, CARB is doing in regards to transportation. Um, I think it would be really, really helpful because uh, CARB is in the process of passing um, many different um, pieces of uh, rules and whatnot that ultimately um, are a huge impact, positive impact into all of the AB 617 communities. And I think um, one of the things that they're currently working on and it's into recommendations are into their board now is on ocean going vessels and how they um, uh, are reducing emissions in terms of um, when they when they come to port. So it's their at port or at birth um, um, reduction of their auxiliary engines that they use to, um, because as you know, almost 50% of the pollution that comes into the South, South Coast Air Quality Basin is from ocean going vessels and activities around the port, um, including, or in, in addition to that, there's the diesel, diesel engines, of course, and the rails that are coming in through um, the various e, uh, EJ communities. And so understanding, because of course, transportation is key. And so it, it's good to understand that so that way we can hone, you know, for instance, the warehouse ISR rules. Um, you know, we had that, um, that letter that we put together last year um, that recommended some amendments to future rule changes. And so, um, you know, I think that in addition to the uh, railroad ISR rules um, in helping us to understand and then what I, I'm hoping to do is also with all this funding uh, that's becoming available, um, you know, harness a lot of that stuff and, and partner some of these programs so that way we can get the greatest maximum effect. So that, for instance, you know, like, like it was just mentioned, uh, there was budget allocations for um, the, what is that, the uh, hydrogen fuel cell um, rail uh, locomotives, um, but then we also have to look at the electrification of drayage trucks um, within the, the the various yards and whatnot. So mm -hmm. if we can have an update from CARB, that would be fantastic. And then uh, ultimately, how it all ties into the various AQMD programs would be fantastic. Thank you. I think that's a great suggestion. So an update on CARB matters that impact um, you know our rules or budget would be great. Yeah, just we're just gonna have to check with with CARB 
uh, on some of, you know, and see if they're available for next month. If not, or next at the next meeting, the quarterly meeting, we'll just see what their availability is. Because I think they need to address some of those issues that yeah. uh, they're, they're in charge of. Yeah, just for everybody's reference, you know, obviously CARB is the statewide um, body that um, oversees air quality issues. And so, so much of our work um, is impacted by what they're doing and then obviously the federal government. So I think that's a great uh, suggestion. And we've got Mary with another question. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> so it's not really a question, but it's maybe a request for us to consider having at one of the future meetings, um, a presentation done on the current status of projects out in the Inland Empire, uh, basically Riverside and San Bernardino, it could be. Um, but I'm gonna talk about Riverside very quickly because there are a couple of things that are going on out here that I think that are important for us to um, take note of. One of them is a definite movement um, on the proliferation of warehouses that are being built out in this area. And uh, there is really a, a, a growing movement of community members that are opposed to the warehouses because of the fact that they're um, coming into construction within housing areas. And so um, obviously, you know, the truck traffic and the traffic by itself um, are definitely a consideration. Um, the second one is something that I have brought up before to our group. And I would kind of like to see if we could kind of weigh in a little bit on this one. And that's with in the east side community in the east side part of Riverside is an area where I was born and raised in. Um, <clears throat> one of the uh, things that's going on right now is back in the 1960s, um, we were desegregated. It was one of the first school districts in the nation to actually do desegregation. Um, I was one of the original children that was desegregated at that time from the local elementary school. Well, fast forward 56 years later, um, I'm 66. That'll tell you exactly how long this has been going on. Our children continue to be bused. Now there is a proposed elementary school now finally, after all these years that we struggled in order to get the attention to build a new elementary school that is being proposed and um, built in the East Side community. However, we now learn, or we learned several years ago, but RUSD, which is the Riverside Unified School District did not know that the Riverside County Transportation Commission was going to expand their um, transportation hub. They're calling it a mobility hub. And they are putting a parking development of over 580 vehicles a block away from the proposed elementary school. And this is an environmental justice community. Um, I grew up there. It is within um, just a throw from the 91 freeway. It's also within just a throw of the uh, BNSF railroad. And obviously now with the Metrolink being expanded and now 580 parking development, which is taking up three blocks next to the school. Now this would not be happening, I hate to tell you this, if it were being done someplace else. Um, and that is the concern that we have um, because of the fact I grew up there right at um, a block away from this particular development. I have asthma uh, and I sincerely believe that I, I got it because of where I grew up. And I have to tell you that as I've gotten older here recently, I've been hospitalized for asthma when I wasn't as a younger uh, person. So these things have long um, reaching effects. Um, and I think that it's something that we should consider because there is no reason why this development should be going in when we're still in the process after 56 years of trying to get a school that will stop um, busing 1400 children out of that community. Now just think of the buses that it takes to do that and then we have another 
environmental issue that um, coincides with that. So I really would like to see us maybe take a, um, a presentation on what is going on out there so that everybody can be advised and maybe we can see if we can um, assist the community um, with a voice. Thank, Thank you. you, Mary. Thank you for those comments. Um, I'm gonna let Derek take that response, but just, just know that I personally take your comments to heart. I was bust, um, I took the RTD, so that tells you my age. Um, so I'm sensitive to the issues that you're talking about. And I know I'm way older than you, uh, Chair. I remember taking the RTD from Alhambra to La Puente. So, and those diesel were, diesel buses were horrible. But getting back to your, uh, to your issue, Mary, you know, a lot of a lot of the questions you're asking is are is really out of our purview. Those are land use issues, and why, you know, they're allowing, as an example, warehouses being built next to a school or uh, kids being uh, uh, bust out. But what we can provide is an update on the warehouse ISR, and uh, give you an update as to uh, what we know so far about the warehouses, what's being planned and what some of these warehouse uh, owners are doing to help mitigate uh, some of the air pollution that they're causing uh, from their uh, warehouses attracting the, the, the trucks. And that we could definitely address. Okay, thank you. Derek, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so then the school, the elementary school that's being built in the community then doesn't have any kind of recourse to stand up to um, the transportation commission with them building within a block, um, a site that's going to continue polluting a community that's already impacted? Yeah, well, I'm not an expert on land use issues, but I know those are, those are really land use issues that more on the local, I'm not sure what part of West are. I think you said Western Riverside. No, it's in the east side. It's oh, on the east side. Just, yeah. yeah, that's that. Those are land use issues. If that's Moreno Valley, or I'm not sure where it's at, but those are land use issues that need to be brought up to that local uh, municipality, or if it's unincorporated to the county, and and get that addressed. But hey, I'm I'm with you. I, I you know I think that uh, putting kids next to uh, a major polluter is not the best thing, but those are decisions that are being made at the school district level. Uh, really, we don't have a say in that. We can make comments to their documents or secret documents, but we're really limited as to our authority uh, uh, and we cannot approve or disapprove that type of project. Understand, thank you. I was on mute. I was calling um, Rafael next for his question. Yeah, thank you. It, it's more along the lines of uh, what Mary was saying. I, I too was bust. I too remember the rough, tough and dirty as we used to call it. Um, but in terms of, um, yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna mention there should have been an environmental impact report um, on that particular facility and there should have been public meetings held um, and I'm not sure where they are in the planning process or if they've already moved beyond the planning process, but um, it should be during the design development stages, there should be uh, public comment, um, especially during the permitting process as well. <clears throat> Once they do have the plans available. Uh, so I would encourage you to participate and share those, uh, share those things. Now, whether or not, you know, you could actually for you know some a project of that size and and need because i i would imagine their 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 thrust is to take cars and trucks off or at least cars off the road and lessen the uh, commuter traffic overall but there are suggestions that possibly you could make in you know maybe putting x number of charging stations to encourage electric vehicles um into those um into that uh, facility, you could uh, suggest things like uh, uh, solar solar powered roofs, so that way it's a um, a net uh, gain 
in, into in, in positive impact into the city. Same with the schools. You can encourage electric bus transportation to and from the schools. So that way it lessens all of those lessons, uh, the, the impacts into uh, breathing all these diesel particulates um, and, uh, and automobile traffic. Um, hopefully, you know, you'll be able to do that. But that, that's my suggestion. Great, great ideas. Thank you for that. Um, and we've got Mark um, who has his hand raised from the public attendee side. Can, is Mark able to speak? Okay, there we go. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to comment, this is Mark Abramowitz, by the way. I just wanted to comment that the district right now is working on some uh, updates to its CEQA guidelines, which um, is what local government agencies have to look to uh, when they're um, proposing proje projects. And uh, it's the new guidelines will be looking at cumulative impacts. So I would urge and encourage um, others to uh, become engaged with that effort that's, uh, that's currently going on at the district. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for participating today, Mark. Okay, I don't see any other hands raised. Um, is there anything that the public would like to comment on that was not on the agenda? Oh, I'm sorry, board member Padilla. Sorry, I should have raised my hand sooner. I just wanted to really quickly say thank you to the department because I understand somebody attended our PCI, Pacoima Community Initiative Group, and they invited folks to this meeting. I was really happy to hear that. So I just want to say thank you. To, I think it was Evangelina who attended maybe. Uh, with, she's kind of coming back. So I think it was you. And you invited them. So I just wanted to say thank you for reaching out to our community and inviting them to this space. Thanks. Thank you for that. Um, Mark, you still have your hand raised. Is this some, uh, would you like to speak again under public comment period? Nope, okay. Looks like he's uh, put his hand down. So we've got our next meeting on April 28th. And at that time, we'll get an update on the rendering facilities and where those um, that smell related issue is right now. And then we will try to get a speaker from CARB to attend to give us an update on what they've got going on for the year and anything else that staff has. Um, I'd love for this committee to be something that you all get some direct information about issues that matter to you. If you have anything that you would like to see on here, please don't hesitate to email me. I'm trying to and, and uh, board, member, board member Padilla, whatever um, you all have, we want this to be something that's useful to you and your time. Anything else, Derek? Yeah. Yeah, did you want us to bring the warehouse ISR? Also? Oh, yes. Yeah, I know that there's, a, we're beginning the documentation stage and I'd love for everybody to be aware. Um, the warehouse ISR is a, a historic policy. So I think it's important that folks get regular updates. We'll do that. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend and enjoy. Oh, we got Rafael who'd like to say a little something before we, we head out. I do. I just want to, you know, wish you all a safe weekend. But in addition to that, just be very cautious because of the um, Memphis videotape beating of the gentleman that ultimately lost his life at the hands of police uh, will soon come out. I just caution you on just keeping an eye out for the reactions. There's gonna be a lot of um, possible civil unrest. Hopefully there are gonna be a lot of peaceful demonstrations. We also have just now the release of the Nancy Pelosi's husband hostage uh, tapes as well. So there may be to a lesser extent, um, you know, backlash around around that as well. So I just wish everyone very cautious and safe weekend. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. Enjoy your day, everybody. Appreciate that. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye.
Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Cool.